People love to argue about what AFV was the first main battle tank. The Panther and Centurion are the most commonly cited vehicles. Unbeknownst to many, the title of main battle tank is largely meaningless. It's pretty interchangeable with medium tank as a role, though many make the argument that MBTs don't have supporting tanks like lights or heavies. When people think about modern main battle tanks, a few distinguishing features come to mind. Integral composite armor, a hypervelocity gun, and advanced fire control systems, all on one neatly packaged platform. There is one tank that pioneered this concept, though it is largely forgotten or ignored. The first tank to pop up in your mind might be the T-64, but the first tank to match all these concepts together was actually the American T-95. The T-95 started with a series of conferences, dubbed Operation Question Mark. Question Mark fostered a lot of new and weird tank concepts. Eventually, nine designs were singled out. Some were TS-1, TS-3, and TS-4. These would have shorter development times. The TS variants were largely the same, having the same gun, powertrain, and fire control equipment. The area they differed in was weight. TS-1 was to weigh 43 tons, TS-3 40 tons, and TS-4 35 tons. TS-1 was to use new Silicus cord armor, while TS-3 and TS-4 used standard RHA. Similar long-range proposals were also developed, called TL-1, TL-2, TL-5, and TL-7. There was one main distinction between the TS and TL concepts, and that was that the TL tanks would be armed with a new 90mm smoothbore gun, the T-208. Eventually, the TL-1 was selected for development, where it would hopefully replace the M48. The T-01 would weigh 41 tons and use rolled homogenous armor. In January of 1955, it was designated the T-95. It would be accompanied by the T-96 and T-110, which would hopefully replace the M103 heavy tank. Not long after, the T-96 and T-110 were both cancelled. A quite frankly insane number of whole and turret configurations were planned for the program, so for the sake of brevity, we'll only be talking about a few. The first base T-95 was completed in early 1958, and was arguably the most advanced out of all the concepts. The smoothbore gun was placed in a rigid mount, and was stabilized in both axes. The rigid mount had a few positive effects. Namely, there was no need to design or leave space for a recoil mechanism, so that reduced weight and complexity. It also wasn't necessary to leave space for the gun to recoil, so that increased the amount of working space for the crew. Compared to rifled guns, the smoothbore was easier to manufacture and had a longer service life. It also fired a new type of ammunition, armor-piercing fin stabilized the scarring sabo. This new round was designated T320. The penetrator was made of tungsten carbide, weighed 11 pounds, and had a relatively low LD ratio. At around 1500 meters per second, muzzle velocity was relatively high. The most interesting components were part of the fire control equipment. Instead of a stereoscopic or coincidence rangefinder, the T95 had a device known as a T53 Optical Tracking Acquisition and Ranging System, or OPTAR for short. Housed in an armored blister on the right hand side of the turret, OPTAR would fire pulse beams of light at the target, light that would then bounce off the target and return to the system. This is very similar to how modern laser rangefinders work, but it had a few issues. The light that was fired was incoherent, unlike lasers. This meant that it could be easily scattered by fog or smoke. It also meant that multiple returns could be given, requiring the crew to guess which readout was most accurate. This was fed to the T-37 electronic ballistic computer, which would automatically calculate super elevation. Though the base T-95 didn't have silica core armor installed, several T-95 hulls and turrets were constructed with it and used in ballistics tests. This armor basically consisted of glass panels encased in layers of steel. Against shape charges, it was up to 3.5 times more effective than steel, and nearly as effective as steel against kinetic rounds. There were a few issues though. It didn't hold up to repeated hits, and it was very difficult to manufacture. Despite its impressive features, the T-95 was ultimately canned with good reason. The gun was very inaccurate. An advanced gun was developed which solved these issues, the 120mm Delta gun, but the army foolishly stopped working on it to pursue gun launcher systems. As mentioned earlier, the Octar system had several flaws. The rigid gun mount caused more trouble than it was worth. In off-road testing, it performed worse than the M48A2, and only achieved parity after some improvements. It offered no significant advantage over the M48, so in July of 1960, the program was officially terminated. So while the T-95 wasn't very good, it was pretty forward-thinking. The T-64 also had a lot of issues, probably more so than the T-95, but the Soviets were able to get them ironed out. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you on the next one.